our last talk for this afternoon is Matt Bauer, and he's going to tell us about exceptional collections and rationality. Well, thank you, Tony, for your introduction. I'd like to thank the organizers for the invitation. It's always a pleasure to speak here. Um, I've got a tough act to follow, but hopefully, please stop this. Uh, if you get bored and you're uh, yeah. mirror symmetrists, here's an exercise <laughs> to think about for the next you know, 60 or so minutes. So give me the mirror to this, whoops, curve. Okay. The only little bit of difference. Bit of a difference, but is that. Okay. Anyway, you get bored. So what I'm going to talk today is uh, joint work with Alex Duncan, who's at South Carolina, uh, Alicia Marsh, who's my student, who's fishing, um, which will be somewhere next year, uh, and Patrick McFadden, who uh, is uh, at Fordham. Okay. We still have that eye on the board, so I guess that's a good. <coughs> Good way to occupy people's time. And the basic question is the following. It's a metaphysical question because it's not completely precise, but if you take a field, just a general field, take a smooth projected variety over it, and you look at the derived category, what can you pull out of it to tell you about the rationality or non rationality of okay. And the general expectation, and you can see from uh, what we saw in Maxime's talk, semi-orthogonal decompositions, or the structure of the set of semi-orthogonal decompositions, should have a strong influence on the rationality, or at least the non-rationality of the variety. So uh, we heard a little bit about uh, really a thing just a moment ago, but I'll just remind you, Kuznetsov's conjecture for rationality, that if you had a semi-orthogonal semi decomposition with this component, it was equivalent to the drive category of a community of the K-free circuit, and only a, a cubic four-fold was rational. So that's sort of a flag that we can put up and give you an example to illustrate the previous principle. I'm not going to talk about that. What I'm going to talk about is like anything, trying to take it to its limiting situation where you can try and learn something to start with and then build back up, hopefully. Okay? So, if the structure, some amount of rationality or non-rationality is encoded in the set of semi-orthogonal decompositions, then one of the first things I should look at is the implications <laughs> of the simplest semi-orthogonal decompositions on the rationality of the variety. And what are the simplest ones? Well, the simplest ones are exceptional collections. When your derived category or your category is built out of derived categories of points. And now I'm going to work over a general field because it gives me a lot more interesting examples to play with. Particular questions to answer that are, as you'll see, sort of gobsmackingly obvious over C. So here, uh, what do I mean for an exceptional collection, uh, an exceptional object? I'm going to start with just division algebra. And related to the exercise there, um, you can take the base field to be R and take the unique non-trivial division algebra, the quaternions, over it. That's an example. And then an object is exceptional, well, if it has no non-zero non degree x between itself. And that's endomorphisms of just this fixed division. Okay. And we label with an A. Uh, I'm going to take the convention that if I say exceptional, it'll mean for some division. Maybe that's not the best one. 
<coughs> but um, when I when I say the so of course if we go to an algebraically closed field or a separably closed field, this notion degenerates into the usual one. We just have k exceptional. But in between, we could have maybe not a non-commutative thing, but just a finite separable field extension. Something that's a little bit more mild in terms of the other ones. Like say, I don't know, C over R. So if um, the exceptional objects and the morphisms are just a finite separable extension, I'll call it a tall exception. So a tall exceptional is the, you know, the correct statement about your derived category or whatever category built out of derived categories of points, smooth points, over not close fields. Yeah. Okay, so make the first obvious pass. Say that X possesses a full exceptional collection. Is it rational for the field? Okay. You have to remember what my definition of exception was in order to clarify this. But as a first pass of a question, it's not so bad. If it's k-exceptional, meaning the endomorphisms are just the base field itself, no trivial Galois action going around, then Orlov says, yes, in fact, it is fresh. And even stronger, Valeri conjectures that your variety can be decomposed into pieces, uh, the big piece is rational, pieces you're missing are rational, the pieces you're missing from those are rational, in the way that it's built up by this cut and paste method completely from rational things. So not just the big piece, but every piece of it as you decompose it in some motivic fashion is rational. So uh, he calls that tape, I think that's a good name. Okay. So K exceptional, expectation is yes. Here's an example, looks familiar from the board over there. So here we have a semi-orthogonal decomposition. Uh, in general, for such varieties, as is written down by Bernadara. Uh, it's got the structure sheaf, and in this case, we have a rank two vector bundle whose endomorphisms are the quaternions. Okay. This is clearly not rational because it has no points over R. Easy way to tell something's not rational. Okay. So this general notion of exceptional, where I include division algebras. Definitely not rational. I think my next slide is the table. Yes. Okay. So full exceptional collection. Are we rational over K? K exceptional. We expect a yes. A little star up there because not a good statement. A tall exceptional. I have a question mark because I haven't given you evidence either way. I have a little star up there because you can do really silly things like just take spec of a field that's not K. Okay. But if it's, say, geometrically reducible, it becomes a little more interesting question. And then if you're just straight up division algebra, exceptional answers no. And what's the evidence for this? The evidence doesn't go much beyond one slide. So in dimension one, if we have a smooth projected curve, then you're actually P1 over the field if and only if you have a full and tall exception. In fact, your full of tall exceptional collection has to be k exceptional in that case. How do you work something like this? Well, you go up to the separable closure, use results of other structure derived categories over curves. Genus zero can't have them. Genus higher than one. Genus sorry, genus one. Genus one, one's a whole right here. Genus one, you can't have them. Genus two or greater, you can't have them by result. Kata, I think. And then um, you know automatically it's a severity Brouwer curve, and you use some non commutative modes to tell you that severity Brouwer curves are trivial if and only if they have a full exception. Okay. Now we're going to mention two, already things get a little more, um, no, not as thorough. So uh, Morgan Brown, who's here at Miami, and Ian Shipman, what they showed is, uh, I guess I didn't specify, so this is over C here, first statement. If you have a full strong exceptional collection of line bundles, in fact, are rational over C. And Vial, sort of in a complementary direction, that if you already are rational for the separable closure, your geometric rational, <coughs> and you have a full exceptional collection, full K exceptional collection, I should put that, put that there because this is now over a general field, 
um, then you're in fact rational. And he doesn't even need a um, full exceptional collection, K exceptional collection on the nodes, he just needs it um, basically in the cold mount. He calls it the numerical exceptional collection. Automatically tells you your rational surfaces. Okay? So those are the situations where we have um, some class of examples we can get to the at least for the exceptional collection. Some things that are also not counterexamples, if we take a perfect field and we take a rational surface over a perfect field, then uh, it's known that the derived category always has a forward style, a tall exceptional collection. It's clear you can't get away with full k exceptional collection because your non to field is low point, that's not k in the projective space. Now you have an tall exceptional collection. Okay. And um, uh, Menin's classification of rational surfaces, minimal rational surfaces, and work of all in Buradara for uh, Del Pezzo surfaces, you put that together and this comes out. Okay. Also not counterexamples, all the knowledge we have about what varieties have exceptional collections. Varieties that have exceptional collections are usually quite special. They, they satisfy this conjecture of the layer. They, they're built out of affine space, built in pieces of affine space. So, in some sense, this should not be that hard of a question, because these are exceptionally special things that we see in day-to-day you know, -day life as a mathematician. That when they have exceptional collections, have a very rigid structure in terms of their rationality. Okay. So, if I'm gonna try and understand this question, what do I wanna do? Well, like I said, I wanna try and take it to a situation that's uh, decently well understood under some assumptions. And over C, what we have is we have a lot of homogeneous spaces with exceptional collections. So let's make it even better. Let's just say that I have a linear algebraic group over my base field. And when I say linear algebraic group, I mean uh, you know, a smooth, finite type, definitely not a scheme, my or a character CP. Okay. And we're going to go from linear algebraic group to torus in a bit here, so don't worry too much about that. And let's say X is a smooth projective compactification of the group G. So we are talking a bit about torque varieties, for instance. Torque variety is such an example. So for these classes of varieties, is this conjecture of Orloff true? If I have a full K exceptional collection, am I automatically rational over the basic? Now, over C, this is a, a nonsense question, or over any separately closed field, this is a nonsense question because these things are automatically rational. Right? Such groups are automatically rational. That's what I But it, it is a meaningful question over non-closed fields. And then, you know, we can ask, instead of K exceptional, we saw, at least for surfaces, we had to allow a tall exceptionality. We talked about the right categories of all rational. So, can we say anything in the tall set? So, if our derived category, all the endomorphisms are finite separable field extensions, could our variety be rational? Could it be stably rational? Does it have to be unirational? Variance on this question. Okay. So, just to give you an idea of what kind of things happen over a non-closed field. So back in 54, uh, uh, Chevrolet wrote a paper that was titled uh, On Algebraic Group Varieties. The goal of the paper was to try to understand when linear algebraic groups are rational. Or at least try to compile the existing body of literature and then make a systematic push towards answering that question. Um, so, the, one of the simplest ones that is not rational, in fact, it's not stably rational, 
comes from the following construction. So let's say I have a fuel extension, L over K here, and my uh, Galois group is the Klein group. So the simplest non-cyclic So here's an example. Uh, you know, if you're like over Q, you just take two square roots and then join them. Okay. Now, um, so if I, so what's this in the middle? The middle here is I take, uh, so I have GM. Is this, is this visible? Is that visible at all? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. People are giving me a thumbs up farther back than I expected. Okay. So what do we got? So what, what is this? This is the Bay restriction of, um, of GM from L to K. You should think of this as like L star. Units in L. This is the units in K. I have a norm map between the two. And I can just take the kernel of the norm map. That'll give me a new abelian group and in fact a new torus. And what uh, Chevrolet showed back in 54, for, even for slightly more general ones, where I think it took like Z mod P and Z mod P, is that this kernel here of norm map is not a stably rational product. So, reminder, let's, you're stably rational if we can change our reminder from registering. <laughs> that has passed. The new reminder is, so you're stably rational if you cross with some number of copies of affine space and you're birational affine space. Okay. In fact, this torus is not stable. So, uh, I'm going to reduce from just a general linear algebraic group to just a torus. So what do I mean by a torus? So again, K is my general field. A torus is anything that will base change to GM over the separable closure. And what I had on the previous board, uh, this, so this previous thing here, this guy is called a, a this guy is called a norm one torus. It's the kernel of norm map. Well, it's norm one. So you can check pretty easily that base change this. Of course, you get GM base change this. You get uh, GM to the dimension of the extension, and then the kernel of such a thing is just going to be another copy of GM. What was that? Okay. So this is an example of a non-trivial, non-split torus. And its dimension, its rank is uh, just the dimension of the field extension length. Okay. So what I want to try and understand then is I want to try and understand if I have a smooth projective compactification of such a torus, a torus right? And it has a full exceptional collection. All the endomorphisms are either copies of the base field or finite separable extensions of the base field. Is the torus variety, is the torus rational? There's one little subtlety about the torque variety in, in non closed field beyond what I said. Usually you'll see, you think about it as some type of um, smooth projective compactification of C star to the R so that the action of C star to the R extends over the compactification. The only subtlety here is that when I'm over a non closed field, I can, instead of just taking T sitting inside, X as an open subset, and I can take a torso. And then compactify the torso. So, really, when I say torque variety, I'm talking about a 
T equivariant compactification of some T torsor over the base. Plate. Coming back to our exercise example here. So if I want to take the norm one torus for C still over R, well, what does the norm map look like? Z times bar Z, real part squared plus imaginary part squared equals one. Otherwise, uh, you know, it's an S1, pretty much everyone else. And if I look at this uh, severity Brouwer curve here, this is an S1 torque variety. And there's no unique way to put a given structure of a torque variety, a torque variety for a fixed force on, on such a variety. In fact, you could have different tori for which the same variety is toric under different actions of force. So here, this guy, oops, this guy here is a S1 torque variety. Here's the torsor, just open piece set equal to one. Right? And the action is what you would expect. Well, this is a, you know, e to the i theta here. This is e to the i theta with negative modulus. You, know, you multiply it out in real imaginary components, it still makes sense. And that gives you the action of S1 on this U, and this is a non-trivial torsor because we don't have a point. We don't have a solution to this equation. All right, so I claim this is a meaningful question. So I better tell you that there's at least some non-rational things floating around when I do this, unlike over C. So, if you think about what uh, the data, come back here, here we go. You think about what this data is algebraically, what are you gonna get? Well, over the separable closure, I just have a copy of my usual torus. Functions of my usual torus, uh, rock polynomials in some number of variables, okay? And to get back down to T, I'm going to have some Galois action on it. Okay. So really, what I have is I have, since this splits over some finite extension, I have a finite subgroup of invertible matrices of rank R over the unit terms. Conjugacy classes of such things classify my tori. Fix your rank, there's only finally final many in a given rank. Finally many in a given dimension. So, given that, you can write it down. Although it gets progressively more <coughs> tedious to do this. So, things start off simply enough. I have two tori of rank one, possibly over any given field. So, this is the total number possible over a given field. This tells me how many of those are rational. This tells me how many of those are stably rational, but not rational. This column tells me how many of those are retract rational, but not stably rational. Another reminder. Retract rational is a notion introduced by Saltman. And um, if I look at this, it looks like this is a projector of A1, right? So it's a retract, if you prefer that language topologically. But then I could just more generally say that I have two rational maps whose composition is equivalent to just the identity on X. That's a weaker notion of rationality than stable rationality. Okay. So things are pretty, pretty plain here. Like I said, dimension one, you've seen the two examples over R. Either. Dimension two, there's 13 possible um, non-isomorphic tori of rank two, and all of them are rational. Something happens in dimension three, there are 73, but 58 are rational. 
None are stably rational that aren't rational. None are retract rational that aren't rational. Which means it's always a danger to do arithmetic. But 15 are not retract rational. And if you remember the dimension of the uh, example I gave, for the Klein 4 group as the Galois group, you've seen one such non retract Okay? And then, uh, in principle, you can classify this in any dimension. But as you can see here, uh, it gets larger. So you have 710 possible non-isomorphic tori of dimension 4 <coughs> over a given field. We have a little asterisk here because we know that there are seven that are retract rational that are not stably rational. And then what, 200 and some that are straight up not retract rational. But then there are 10 here that we don't know if they're rational or not, but we know they're stable. Another fun exercise that's a bit harder for uh, 60 minutes is, does there exist a stably rational but non-retract rational torus? Full stop. Still open question. You like to think torque, right, about the most basic things in the world. Okay. Um, these tori are always unirational, though. So they give you a nice playground where you can, you know, pick out given levels of behavior of rationality by trying to find the appropriate torus. Okay. So as I said before, over a general field with x some torque variety for a given torus. If its derived category possesses a full exceptional fraction, does it have to be rational? Previous table tells you that this is a non-trivial question. You're not going to have anything interesting in dimensions one or two, but maybe in three and above. And then maybe we, uh, if we're you know feeling our oats, we move from. The endomorphisms just being the base field, the endomorphisms all being fields. Find out separate voice dimensions of the ground. So, first theorem. So, if we take a toric variety and we assume it has a point over the base field, if it possesses a full k exceptional collection, then it is in fact a k rational. So the answer to, to well, Orlov's conjecture is true for maybe toric varieties in the purest sense, where the compactification is the torus itself. So remember this 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 point here. The big open is some torsor in general. I got a point. I've killed the torsor. I just have a torus inside. All right. So we were happy. We can answer that for toric varieties. We see we know a whole lot about the structure drive categories, we know they're very rational. Over a general field, if we have a full K exceptional collection, we're rational. Now we move to tall exceptional. Pick your favorite, that's not correct. That should be a three. <coughs> As you can see from the previous slide. So for any dimension bigger than or equal to three, there exists smooth projective geometrically rational varieties. So remember, geometrically rational just means a base change to the separable closure, and I am rational. In particular, an irreducible variety, I don't have things splitting off when I go over K bar. And this is over the rationals. <clears throat> you, know, you can do this over a general number field, probably over a general global field, if you have the patience to check some details about things you'll see in that. Okay? But 
the derived category has a full of tall exceptional collection, and it has no rational class. So, in particular, what that tells me is it tells me that if I have no points over Q, well, certainly I can't be rational because I have a huge open set of Q points. I can't be stayed irrational too because I can project off of this guy onto there and get a whole lot of other points over the base field. In fact, I can't be retract rational either. Or even unirational. So. So can I ask you a naive question? Yeah. Uh, so can you give some kind of intuition about Borlaug's definition? Why, why is originally this fact true anyway? Like the more is being the field than it's not rational. Well, I think it originated more over C. Okay. That, that, okay. Maybe it's a revisionist history. Larry would know better. Um, but my my understanding of how I would go about trying to believe such a statement is as follows. I I know a lot of varieties that have exceptional collections. Plus mines, projective spaces, four varieties, other homogeneous spaces. Those also happen to have a very particular structure, motivic. They're all built out of rational pieces. Okay. Okay. So, is there some way to convert this data? If I want to make an analogy, it's kind of like these are the critical points of the Morse function, of my exceptional collection. I get some cells associated with them. Each of those cells tell me how my variety is rational. It's not exactly that, but that's. You know, wake up in the morning, you're kind of confused. That's that's that'd be good. Good. Mm -hmm. okay. And then any you know, if you have nothing better to do, you have a question over C, you try and figure out if it makes sense over K, or if you can get anything useful out of it over K. Learn something new that you couldn't learn before. Right? Okay. So here we saw K exceptional torque variety. It's fine. The example here is also a torque variety. And I'll tell you what it is in a second. But as soon as we uh, go from base, K, base field K to uh, find a separable extension, basically all hell breaks loose in terms of the structure of the drive category. There's no guarantee that structure of the drive category will force anything about the rational. So, some notes on the proof. So for this is the proof of uh, the first one. So it's well known how to understand the rationality properties. Not necessarily rationality over K, but we'll come back here real quick. This table. These two properties, stable rationality and retract rationality of a torus, you can basically write down a program. If you're given a presentation of the torus of finite subgroup of invertible matrices over the integers, to tell you whether or not these conditions hold. You replace it with some particular resolution as a module over the Galois group. If the resulting module is, uh, if it has a basis that's permuted by the Galois group action, if I have a finite group, I have a rapid lattice that acts on that biomorphisms. There's no guarantee that I'm going to have an actual basis that gets moved around under the finite perfection. If I do, that thing I make from the torus is stably rational. And then if it's some end of such, it's, it's retract rational. And there's no, uh, unfortunately, simple characterization of rationality. Okay. So I mentioned that you do something to the torus itself, some, uh, some resolution of it. In fact, the resolution is, you know, what uh, the resolution is what everyone does in torus geometry every day of their life. So over the separable closure, it's just a copy of GM. I have the torus. I have a map to divisors. Maps to line bundles. 
And this thing here is actually a representative of the invariant you extract to understand the rationality of the torus. This thing here. With It's Galois group action. So if you have a basis of line bundles permuted by the Galois group, then your torus is in fact stably rational. If you have a basis of line bundles, well, if this is a sum and of something, or you have a basis of line bundles that's permuted by the Galois group, this torus is in fact retracted. And that's, that's a nice characterization because most of the conditions you have when you try and extract invariant about rationality it tells you if you're rational this must be true and then you argue backwards saying it, this condition doesn't hold so therefore you're not rational. Whereas at least for tori you have it boiled down into some simpler linear algebra S condition. Okay. So and when you think about what k exceptional is, k exceptional means I have almost no useful, no interesting Galois structure appearing whatsoever in anything that I can build out of the cohomology of my variety. Because my cohomology is built out of copies of k, I have an exceptional collection. k has no Galois action. So anything built from it should have no Galois action. In particular, I look at k naught. It surjects onto this Picard group by the determinant. Well, this has trivial action, this has trivial action. And in fact, I said there was no correct condition in general. This is not equivalent to rationality, but if you know that the car group carries trivial Galois action, then in fact, you, this is a full result of Boston Krasinski. Did I say that right? Yeah. I'll make it correct. You can check the rationality. So that, that's the first one. But that's also in an algebraic close as well. Huh? This so only is, I mean, this is, this, this you know, the ratio is uh, implied by Picard group having a trivial action. This is all over K as well. This is, this is all, I mean, I can't talk about Galois yeah, action unless I go up to K bar. But it's yeah, a statement about. Sorry. Any other questions? Okay. Yes, this is language one. So you can ask about take a, your favorite linear algebra group. Everyone's favorite is your kind of arithmetic E8. So if you have a homogeneous space for such a thing or some predictive classification, you can ask similar questions. That I don't know the answer to. Okay. So one more time, the retract rational or stable rational, how is it? Uh, what's the property on the exceptional collection? It's not, it's not an exceptional collection. It's just on the Picard group. Uh, say, say K bar is C, mm -hmm. right? so the algebraic closure is just C. Right? So what you have is you have something defined over, um, I'm going I'm to say that K, Q bar is C, for, but that's, that's stupid. Let's say you have something whose algebraic closure is, is C, and it's, it's K, K is the field. Okay, you have something defined over K, you base change it to C, now you just have your usual torque variety. Right, you have your torus, your torus invariant. You have your torus invariant divisors. Yeah. Keep my notation consistent. And then they have your classes of the card group. Okay. Now, this thing carries a Galois action because you know uh, if I have a line bundle, I pull back by the Galois group, I'm getting another line. What is the strength? This this is a you know this is. Z to some rank R, maybe rho is better. Since it's and this factors through some, this action factors through some uh, finite group, basically. So what do I have? I have a finite group acting on a lattice. If that lattice has a basis that's permuted by the finite group, then X itself is stably rational over K. If and only if. Well, a little bit care has to be taken basically. Um, and then if it's a sum and of such a thing, a sum and of a permutation module, or, or you add a permutation module, it's a sum and. I'm getting a little sloppy here. 
there. So people watching online, please forgive me. Um, then it's then it's retry the rational. Okay. But it's nice. It's, it's, it's purely captures the two invariants in terms of simple linear algebra over Z. All right. So on to B now. What we need to do is produce the following. We want a non-retract rational torus, okay. a smooth projective torque variety for that torus, satisfying some conditions. First, we're going to want to have a point for the torque variety. So we don't want a torus in the middle of a torus. We want to know a priori that the derived category has a full and tall exceptional collection. So already these two things here tell me that I'm going to have things that aren't going to retract rational when I have a point that have full and tall exceptional collections. And then finally, I want a trivial torus. I want a torsor for my torus that maybe I should put this in quotes because I'm need maybe another lecture to explain what invisible means. I mean, I think you know what invisible means is a word in English, but precisely what it means. Um, so I want some torsor that can't be detected by any problem. So given such an x, all I do is I just contract my torsor with that x. It basically cuts out the torus in the middle and glues in the torus, torsor instead, and kills that rational thing. Because it's, it's invisible to any Brouwer group, when I take my exceptional collection and twist it going from x to y, none of it twists. It's still all at all. No non-commutative stuff pops in. Okay. So let's see, what did I say? Oh, okay. So maybe I can take a moment here since I have some time to <laughs> So where do we get this X from? Okay, so we want a torus that's not retract rational. I've given you one such torus. So we can take the norm one torus. For GM, I said we're going to do this over C, over Q. So this is going to be a, a biquadratic extension. And now what I want is I want an interesting torque variety that compactifies this. So it may, it's certainly not intuitive presenting it this way, but what you do is you think about this as living inside S3 cross Z mod 2Z. You stare at S3 cross Z mod 2Z for a bit, and you remember it's the anamorphism group of the root system A3. Okay, right? And then you remember, aha, I have a very interesting torque variety associated to any root system. Right? So x over uh, L will be uh, x associated for A3, the torque variety associated with the chambers. Okay. Now I need to produce an exceptional collection on X itself. Uh, fortunately, a useful collection was produced by Kastrovet and Tedelo for any X of AN. So they produce On any X of AN, they produce a uh, S N plus one cross two Z stable full exceptional collection. Okay. That's sort of the first step. If you have something pulled back from the base field, it should be permuted as you move around via the Galois action. Okay, so then you check, you check that this, 
you check it descends to in a tall collection on X itself. Okay. And uh, basically, if I have a norm one torus, or I, uh, the fact that this sits inside here it also guarantees that, well, okay, sorry. I had to check if it sends to L for the action of this torus. I get a copy of the torus inside, and it said this torus is not retract rational, but now we have a tall exceptional collection. Okay, and now the only thing left is I need a non-trivial torsor for my Brouwer group, or for, for, my, for this torus, so that um, uh, whenever I try and detect it, I try and send it into any kind of Brouwer group in some functorial way, it just dies. Okay. So I'm going to erase this exercise. Hopefully uh, people will have answers by the time I'm done. So, uh, you know, we, in another paper, we defined an invariant of an algebraic group that looks like the kernel over all natural transformations from uh, torsors for the linear algebraic group. into any Brouwer group. These things often arise as just connecting homomorphisms. We have an extension where uh, G is on one end and a quasi-trivial torus is on the other end, like GM. Right. So we, we define this, and then what we do is we compute it. I mean, um, we, well, yeah, we, we show how to compute this in a more manageable fashion. You compute this. Again, that's a bit of a... How much you've computed something is always in the eye of the beholder. It's not a number, so... And we check that, in particular, for this bi-quadratic extension, there is one non-trivial uh, such torus that's invisible to all Brouwer groups. Okay? So then we just twist what we have here by that torsor, and then we get the example that comes in the state of the theorem here in dimension three. Okay? And then higher dimensions, you just cross with something. And in fact, whenever you have a uh, bi-quadratic bi extension, you're going to get one of these. So there's this all over the place once I have bi-quadratic extensions. Okay. So I'll end with some questions. So does any smooth projective torque variety over general field possess a full exceptional variety? This is going over C. This is the work of Kalamata. And remember, my definition of full exceptional collection means it can be division. So, for a general one, is there, is there a full exceptional collection always? This question, by previous work, myself and Alex and Patrick, boils down to whether or not you have a full exceptional collection on your torque variety that is stable under the action of the automorphism group of the fan. And the way you usually make a full exceptional collection of torque variety is to choose some run of the Moy program. It's, it's very hard to choose that in a stable way for the whole lot Okay. So, you can all. Yeah. And then come back to the question I asked before. So, what is the mirror of the severe Brouwer curve? It's a concrete way. More generally, what are the mirrors of torque varieties? seen a lot of them here as a torque variety over C. Here you can inject some arithmetic questions into mirror symmetry in a setting that's not that far from what's being studied at the moment. So I think with that, call it good. Thank you. Questions? So in your proof for Foster's theorem, so you use this trivial 
Thank you, Carlo. I should not speak up. The focus comes from this uh, existence, exceptional question, but is there some more conceptual way to see why PRI category and national I mean, the nice thing about it's, I, that's a tough question for me to answer because what, what I answer may not be satisfying to everyone. But for me, what I did explicitly write down what I'm trying to tell you is that torque drives over non closed fields are just almost clear out of the data. Or the interviews. So, once you know that, the structure of the drive category, at least an exceptional question, things derived from it should provide a very strong constraint on that near algebra. So that, that for me, at least in the setting, is why it works. Um, of course, for more exotic things, you're not going to be as fortunate. But you can try and understand things by playing a similar game. At least trying to a lot of invariants. Other questions? Let's thank Matt again. <laughs> the bus is leaving at 4.45, so if you want to get on the bus, be there. <laughs> <laughs>